Hello and welcome to the next video in Quad Copter Build Series 9. This is about building a super efficient quad, or trying to anyway with modern components, so that I can get more than 6 or 7 minutes flight time. Now, I've already done loads of quadcopter builds on the series, and each of those builds has been changing ever so slightly as we use later and greater technology. But the last couple of builds in particular, I've been spending time actually making quadcopters that are still using 5-inch props, but have 6-inch arms. And that's because I quite like flying freestyle rather than racing. I'm not really an FPV racer. But there's been a couple of things recently, including the review of this model here. This is that diatone model that's super lightweight, less than 250 grams, was using 1806 motors and getting ridiculous flight times, 15 plus minutes, out of a 1300 milliampere battery. And that has really excited me about what we can do with modern pieces. So in this video, what I'm going to do is go through the pieces that I'm thinking of using and also put them all on a scale because the next video, we're actually going to wire up the motors and try them out with different prop combos to figure out what efficiency and thrust we're going to get using these kind of motors where they have very low KV, really designed to support 4, 5 and 6S uh, batteries, but because they're really low KV, they're like the really old school quadcopters that we all came into the hobby using before everyone got completely obsessed with building five inch race quads. And those quadcopters were a lot more efficient. And the efficiency is all due to the fact that they're using two bladed props and that they're using much bigger props with a little bit more pitch on lower KV motors. So this is all about going back to those first days, but using very modern pieces. So what I want to do is quickly go through each of the pieces. I'll put links in the description for the stuff I'm using. Again, I'm shooting this as I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. So we might get to the other end of this and it might not work at all, but I'm hoping that it will. But the trick to being efficient is, first of all, is to have the right motor and prop combo. And we're gonna have a look at that in much more depth in the next video in the series. But first of all, we need to figure out the approximate weight of the model and all the pieces that we're going to use. So I've assembled all the bits I think I'm going to use. I'm going to stick them on a scale and weigh them out. So let me just put things to the side and make a bit of room. And we'll bring them in piece by piece and stick them on the scales. So let me fire up the trusty kitchen scales. So there we are, we're starting out at zero grams. So this is the frame I'm going to use. This is the ether frame from Flynoceros. Uh, again, we've looked at this a lot on the channel. Uh, this one is using these eight inch arms. So it's actually quite a big beastie. I'm <laughs> struggling to get it in the camera, uh, but it isn't particularly heavy because of its construction. So that's 120 grams just in the frame. The next thing we need to think about then are flight controller and ESCs. Now, I'm going to use the Radix. Now, I've been looking for a project to use the Radix on for a little bit. Uh, the Radix is the new flight controller for Brain FPV. Again, we looked at it a while ago. And the uh, Brain FPV RE1, which is the first version of their flight controller, I was a huge fan of. So um, I'm excited to use this new version. So let me just put it in the bag. That didn't add a lot, did it? Uh, we're also going to have to think about ESCs. I'm not sure what amp we're going to pull, but I pretty much guarantee that whatever we're going to do is going to be less than 40 amps. The other thing about these Hobby Wing 4-in-1s is they'll, they'll fit beautifully with that Radix flight controller. So let's pop him on as well. So that's the ESC. So that was about 10 grams. Uh, we're going to then need a camera. Uh, again, because I'm trying to build a super lightweight frame here, um, we could put something like a split on it, but for the initial testing, I'm gonna go with something really small. So I'm gonna use the new Micro Swift 3 here. This is uh, one of the latest cameras from Runcam, and it is super diddy, super diddy. So I'm gonna pop that on there, so 136. That takes us up to 142. We haven't got to the motors and props yet, have we? Or the battery. Uh, I'm going to use an Atlatl HV. Surprise, surprise. I always use these things. This is the latest version of the Atlatl. So uh, I'm going to have to put that on. So we're 142. One fifty-two now. So we have flight controller, ESC, camera, video transmitter, 
Oh, I suppose we probably need an antenna, don't we? We can use a good old Menace RC Pagoda. 162 in the frame before we get to the other pieces. So let me just write down on a bit of paper where we're up to. So everything else is about 162. There's going to be some extra pieces uh, with a little power lead and other bits and bobs as well. So let's call it about 170 grams. And then we're going to need motors, props and a battery. So back down to zero. So we're going to need four motors. Probably a bit of additional wire as well, because I don't think the wire is going to fit to the center. So each of those is 32. Let's call that 40. Uh, so it's 40 grams times four, which is going to be 160 grams just in the motors themselves. We're also going to need some props. Uh, now I haven't used any of these props. These are actually seven by 4.5s, a complete guess of what I'll need. But again, I'm not bothered too much at the moment about having the wrappers on. So that's another 32 grams uh, prop. So that's actually, because there's going to be, that's two in a packet. I'm going to need two of those. That's that. And then the big weight is going to be the flight battery. Now, if I was going to use something like a regular flight battery, something like a 1300 4S pack, I'd be using that. Oh my gosh. So that's a 1.3 4S Come on, settle down, 172 grams. But actually, I think this might run really nicely on a 3S. Now this is what I used to run back on my endurance quads back in the day. Uh, these are actually 3S packs, uh, but they're 3700. Let me try and make sure that nothing is off the edge of the scale. So 3700 3S is 279 grams. So that's going to be the maximum weight, although if I wanted to put a good old 2200 3S, that's going to be 154. That's not bad actually. Or a 4S 2200. I'll make sure that everything is on the scale so it's reading it. Okay, that's going to be in the middle. That's 234. So that's a 2.24s. Okay. So if I add all of these weights up, then if we're going to use something like the 2200s at 234 grams, it's going to be about 596 grams in total. Or if we're going to use something like the 3700 3s, which is what I'd really like to use. It's about another 30 grams on that. So we're talking about a quadcopter weighing about 630 grams. Knowing that, then what we actually have is a rough idea of how much thrust that we need from the motors and props in the next video. So now we know the weight of the model, we can do a little bit of math. So we know that the weight of the model, let's call it 630 grams for the of argument, a little bit over twice that in thrust. So the, the thrust we actually need is about 1.4 kilograms. If we divide that 1.4 kilograms between each of the motors, each of the motors needs to produce uh, maximum 350 grams. Now, these motors will easily do that, absolutely easily do that. So it's a case of how do we get that thrust out of this with a 3S or a 4S battery and what size props it's gonna run. Now, at the hover point, each of these is going to have to produce about 175 grams. So when we come and do the testing now, what we need to do is on the testing rig, run it up and find out not only what the thrust is going to be, because we don't want mega, 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 mega amounts of thrust with this. We want to make sure that we're getting 350 grams or more at 100% throttle. Uh, 400 grams, I think, would be a nice amount. That would make this still quite a nippy little beastie. But at the hover point, around 170, 175 grams, that's the bit that we're really interested in, just around that level and just above. That efficiency is where the quad is going to spend a lot of its time kind of flying around. So we need to measure the efficiency of the motors and props 
at a couple of points in the scale with lots of different setups to be able to figure out what the most efficient setup is. So join me in the next video then where we'll actually do the testing with the motors and props and we'll figure out what our best options are, uh, whether these Emacs or those Eachines that we looked at, we'll put some different props on and hopefully the numbers that we'll get will prove that two bladed props are always going to be more efficient than three bladed and who knows, we might even get up to eight inch props on these things to be able to produce the kind of lift that we need for this model weight with super duper efficiency and hopefully we'll get well over three grams per watt and have a really nice long flight time. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.